LED Wizard 7.1 is the global industry standard software for creating LED channel letter and sign cabinet layouts. Most of these layouts start with design files that are either imported or pasted into the software. These files range from clean vector drawings at one end to blurry mobile phone photographs at the other. Your job is to create an accurate LED layout as quickly as possible that can be used for an estimate and production of the job. So in this video, we'll take a look at several tools and techniques for getting your design files ready to be populated. Half the battle here is diagnosing the type of data you have and knowing which tool to use. We'll start here with the import crop tool. So here in the import dialog box, uh, when I click on a file, it brings up a preview. And in this preview, I can actually crop um, out things that I don't want to import. And I do that just by drawing a box around what I want to keep. And then everything else is discarded when I click on import. So I've selected just the Ross lettering, and now I brought in just that subset of the file. Um, but even still, now that I have this lettering, there's a lot of extra data in this file. This was a, a neon drawing. So I want to use the extraction tool to uh, only select those items that I want to keep. And so I'll just zoom in here on uh, the R. And as I move my mouse over the vectors, it highlights a green dotted line. And when I click on that, it adds it to my total objects extracted box. And so I can just go along here and click on those vector shapes that I want to keep. And so now I've selected five objects, the Ross lettering. And I can also scale in one shot here as part of this tool. So I know that I've got a 72 inch height. So I can just type in 72, click on extract. And now when I zoom out, I see the Ross lettering at the full size uh, of 72 inches. So import crop and extraction tool, great tools for um, uh, importing and scaling and getting our data ready to be populated. Now I can just go back to the original, delete that, and I've got this file ready to go. But before we move on to PowerFlow, uh, I do want to turn off the colors uh, so that I can see the loop directions. And in this case, I want the loops to be blue, and I would want any internal loops to be red. Um, if that was not the case, I could just go to Reorder Loops to make sure that those loop directions were correct. And I also want to take a look at the vectors, so I can click on the Vector Edit tool. And this just lets me see what kind of vectors I have, um, is the data smooth? Um, in this case, we have Bezier curves, and I can edit these points, uh, move them. Uh, if I double click on a point, I get a menu. I can switch to an arc or a line, open and close a loop, that sort of thing. So we'll do more um, vector editing uh, as the training goes on. But I just wanted to take a look at those things. I do that on every file, just to make sure my data is good for the next uh, step in the process. Now we'll take a look at exploded data. Uh, exploded data typically comes from AutoCAD, and uh, it's very difficult to handle because each vector is its own object. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean with this file, this Newcastle file, and we'll go ahead and use import crop again, and I'm gonna skip that gradient that shows up on that file. So it brings a file in like this, and at first glance it looks fine, but when you zoom in closer, first of all you see that it's very jagged, and I'll just turn the colors off here as well so we can see better. Um, and when I click on a vector and move it, uh, the entire vector moves and it's not connected. And you notice that the loop um, is, all the loops are black. And black loops mean that um, they're not connected. They're not closed loops. So we have, uh, we have to close those loops. And fortunately, we, we have a tool to do that. So uh, I'm just gonna get rid of some of these extra vectors um, around this shape, and you can see that there are duplicate uh, vectors on top of each other here. So I'll distill this down to, to this, and I'll make a selection, and I'll go into the uh, Edit menu and select Convert Exploded Vector Paths. Now in this tool, we have a little uh, tolerance value. It gives us a little bit of a slop factor. 
and uh, when I click on OK, um, it closes all of those loops. So now when I click on the vectors, you can see that they're connected. Now it doesn't improve the data quality in this case, um, but we have other tools for that that we'll, that we'll discuss today. But it does uh, close the loops in, in most cases, not in every case. You can see that there's still um, some rough data in here. So we can go in here and do a little bit of vector editing, uh, close these loops up. Um, but in general, this tool is an enormous time saver because uh, these, are, these are very difficult files to handle otherwise. So that is the, um, uh, the tool to handle the exploded data. And um, I can go in here further with the loop edit tool and uh, just delete some of these extraneous uh, loops here and extraneous vectors, um, all part of cleaning up this particular file. But that's the main tool that I would use. And um, actually in the next file, we'll take another look at, um, at a file that has this um, exploded style data. Okay, now we'll take a look at a function that we call rasterize vectorize um, as another way to clean up data. And we'll use this Applebee's file. And uh, as we zoom into this file, we see that it also has exploded data, except uh, the vectors aren't actually very close to matching up. So it's, um, it, it's worse than the previous file. Um, <laughs> we can use the convert exploded vector paths tool but I've moved the tolerance range higher so that um, we have a better chance of, of connecting the data. Um, but even so, we only managed to close uh, one of the loops here. So this is what the data looks like. So um, it, it has been reasonably improved to the point where um, we can fill it with color. And I'm just going to clean up one little loop here. Um, so what we'll actually do is fill this with black and then we're going to convert it into an image file and then vectorize that image file. So um, we'll use the rasterize tool and this tool lets me uh, determine the size of the bitmap. And I can make this bitmap a pretty decent size um, to give us uh, a reasonably good quality uh, bitmap to start with. So now this is rasterized and it disappears when I click on colors. And that's how I know that it's now a, um, an image file. Then I'll go back into Vectorize, and we'll talk more about Vectorize later. And I, I just want to select black, and I have a few options here. I'll smooth, um, detect corners, I'll use the large setting, and then click on Vectorize, and then it goes through the vectorizing process. Um, and now I have two versions here. I have the original bitmap, which has been kind of grayed out, um, and the vector version, which is on top. And you can see the vectors here. So. When I click now, uh, using the Vector Edit tool, you can see that I've got nice smooth points, um, and you can see that the data is um, actually considerably better than it was before. Um, it's smoothed out, and, and so that would be the file that I would want to use um, for my LED population. So rasterize, vectorize, terrific way in some cases to clean up files. Now we'll take a look at the function called recreate with Bezier curves. And to do that, we'll start with this A to Z file. And uh, when I import this in at first glance, again, this file looks fine. Uh, but when I click on the vector edit tool, um, we see that in fact, this file is made up entirely of lines, um, short lines, chords. Um, and it's really far more data than we need to describe these, uh, these characters. Um, and so we want to use the Recreate with Bezier curves to reduce the number of points and, and smooth this out. So um, we have 1300 vectors and we want to reduce that. So we select Recreate with Bezier curves tight setting and it goes from 1300 to 175 vectors. Um, so now when I click on the vector edit tool, we see all the points are all spaced out. Um, these are now um, smooth tangent Bezier curves. So a terrific tool for deleting points, smoothing out data. I just want to reorder the loops here. And, um, and then this would be the data that we would move uh, into PowerFlow with.
Our next data cleanup tool is called Alt Smoothing. And for this tool, we'll take a look at this file, this Surfshop file. And as we zoom into this file, we see, um, as with some others, that we have exploded data. So the first thing I want to do is uh, use the Convert Exploded Data tool uh, to clean up this data a little bit before we continue editing. So I'll use that tool and it managed to close all the loops except for one. Um, and now when I go back in here I see that um, in some cases we have uh, smooth data but we do have some chords and we do have some rough sections. So what I'm going to do is smooth out this section. I'll click on the first vector I will hold the Alt key and then I'll click on another vector and all the points between those two vectors will be converted to one arc. And I can continue along the path um, converting, smoothing out the vectors and converting multiple vectors into one arc. I can also vector edit and, uh, and smooth these out, make sure that I have nice smooth um, tangents. And, and this is a really a terrific tool when you just need to do a little bit of editing on certain sections of a file and maybe not um, a global tool like a couple of the ones that we've already looked at. So alt smoothing, a very good technique. Um, you can just continue around the loop and hold down the alt key and sequentially um, uh, delete all those points. And here I'm showing the tangency indicator so I know when, um, when, my, when my vectors are tangent. So that's the alt smoothing technique, terrific uh, vector editing tool. Now we'll take a look at both Weld and Outline as additional tools for data cleanup. And we have this Far East Travel file, and we notice here in this file that um, these strokes are all independent, they're not actually connected, and you can see that when you also turn the colors off. So if we want to use the Weld tool to connect all these strokes together so that each one is, is one complete letter. So we just go to the Tools menu and Weld, it's very simple. Now we have the counterclockwise internal loops, and these are all um, completed letters now. Um, but I, I'm also going to duplicate this now, and let's take a look at some options with outline. So outline can be used to uh, thicken a stroke. It can be used to um, as an inline to make a stroke thinner. Um, the amount of the outline you can determine either by an absolute number or by a percentage of the height. So that's 2% of the height, 5%, 10% um, of the height is actually about 2 inches. And then if we go all the way to 20%, we're actually creating a, uh, a contour outline. We'll just make this a little bit more here. Um, so I have a contour outline. It can be a, a cloud sign outline. And um, if I turn the colors back on here so you can add a color to the background, something like this. So um, a very useful tool um, for making changes. Um, it's used all the time to, um, to thicken up a stroke, for example. Um, terrific editing tools. Now we'll change gears here for a minute and talk about vectorizing. Vectorizing is the process of converting a bitmap file into a vector file. And so your bitmap might be a JPEG, TIFF, PSD, PNG, other formats. Um, note that here in the import dialog box we don't support cropping uh, of the bitmap. It has to be a vector file. So I'll import this file in and just uh, scale my layout size down. So here's my bitmap. It's a nice clean bitmap. Um, I know it's a bitmap because when I turn colors off it, it disappears. So I do want to crop um, here now because I want to take out the dimensions. I don't want to vectorize the dimensions. So I'll just click on the crop tool and just adjust these crop lines um, inside of the dimensions. When I'm ready I'll click, I'll press enter and that will finish the crop. So this is a file that that I now want to vectorize and it's a pretty good size bitmap so I should get pretty good results with this file. I'll go to the image men menu and vectorize and we have um, the option of selecting which colors that we want to vectorize. In this case, we just have black. If we had multiple colors, we could add multiple colors as well. So we have different settings, and these are covered uh, in the help. We want to smooth, we want to detect corners. Um, we have different uh, options here depending on 
um, the size and quality of our artwork. And here, if you want to look at those settings or change those settings, then you can. Uh, but once you're ready, you click on Vectorize. And then it goes ahead and converts this into a vector version. So now on the bottom we have the original, on the top we have the vector version. And again, if I turn off colors, I can click in here, look at these vectors. And if I want to, I could continue to edit these vectors, maybe using one of the tools that we've already discussed. But in general, this looks, this looks pretty good. This looks nice and smooth. So I could probably just continue right on to populating. So that's a quick summary of vectorizing, a useful tool for converting bitmaps into vectors so that they can be used in LED Wizard. And now we have our last tool that we'll look at, which is uh, matching a font. And in this case, we have this photograph of the existing sign uh, as a retrofit. And so we want to import that photograph into LED Wizard. And in this case, this file, uh, you know, it isn't as clean as the other one in terms of um, being able to vectorize it. Uh, it's not a very high quality file. It has um, sort of a shadow underneath it, and it would be difficult um, to cleanly vectorize. So the solution here is to use our text tool and uh, find a font that best matches this text and scale it and position it and then scale it up to create the actual population. So I'm just typing in uh, this text to Thunder Tower and I've just estimated at this point the size and I've, I've picked uh, a font and I want to uh, scale this down and, uh, and match the height of these letters um, as best I can. Obviously I have the wrong font and so I'll want to um, scroll through our font list and try to find um, a more appropriate font. And this one is a little bit closer. This is uh, Frutiger 77, um, not exactly a perfect match. Um, I think, in fact, that this is a Helvetica font, and I will find Helvetica Bold Condensed, and that looks like a perfect match. So I'll just position this text um, right here next to the letters, and um, I have options to extend, condense, options to um, adjust the letter spacing, um, among other options, including uh, rotating and italicizing, um, heightening, and that sort of thing. But in this case, I think just with the letter spacing and scaling, I had to be able to match um, this lettering quite closely. And so I'm just positioning this text right on top of the existing, and I'll just use my letter spacing and also adjust here before the word tower word spacing and, uh, and get that to match. So this becomes my perfectly clean text and uh, if I know that these letters are 36 inches then once I have that correctly spaced I can just punch in 36 inches and then um, now this would be the full size letters that I would populate. Um, I will go ahead and add the Harley Davidson text as well and I'll just put that below um, as the second line so now that I have this text um, correctly scaled, um, now that I, if I just type in the rest of the text, then I know that that will be um, a precise match. So this becomes my file. This is uh, considerably more productive than trying to um, vectorize or on-screen digitize these letters. Um, if you can match the font, that is absolutely the most efficient way to go. Um, and so that's, in this case, the clean way to do um, this channel header retrofit job.